In the last video, we have discussed about uncontrol and control components. Control components will work fine for most of your use cases, but as your form grows, you'll start seeing performance issues. In this video, we are going to build a job application form using uncontrolled components. Let's get into it. We are going to be building a job application form. This job application form is having multiple sections. Over here, I have personal information, I have work related information, I have social media links and the section where you can upload your files. Let's try to build this in my uncontrolled components. First thing you want to do is define an on submit handler. Over here, I'm going to define my on submit function and my function takes an event. To prevent default behavior, I can use e.preventDefault. To my form element, I'm going to provide this on submit handler. To extract data from forms, you usually define refs on your input and at your on submit handler, you extract that data. But to do this for all the elements in our form is a painful process because we are having a huge number of fields and managing refs for all these fields will be tiresome. Instead, I'm going to show you a way where we can extract the form data. To do that, first you'll have to define an ID on your form. Now I can get my element using document.getElementById and I'm going to give this ID. Now I'll be creating a new form data object. Now to my form data object, I'll be providing my input form element. I can iterate over this form data and I can check the structure of my data. Let's take a look. I'll define a for loop and I'm going to use a variable i and I'm going to loop through my form data. Let's log i and let's check the structure. I'm going to enter test data and I'm going to submit this form. You see the variable i gets an array. The first element is your field and the next element is your value. So let's create a new object. I'm going to call it upload data, assign it an empty object. While I'm looping through the form, I'm going to extract my field and I'm going to provide that as a property for my object and I'm going to extract value and I'm going to assign that to my property. Let's log this upload data and let's check the structure again. I'm going to enter my test data and I'm going to submit this form. Now you see, I have a well-defined key value pairs. I can use this for my process. So instead of refs, this is a pretty straightforward and pretty easy way to extract your form data. You need to define validations for your input forms. One of the basic validations is your required field validation. When I try to submit my form, it would be submitted. To prevent that, you need to find a way to add this required field validation. Your browser supports some inbuilt validations and one among that is your required field validation. To add that, I'll go to my input element and I'm going to add an attribute called required. This is going to trigger the browser validation whenever I don't enter that input field. Now, when I try to submit my form, it is going to trigger that browser validation saying I'll have to fill out this field. Let's add this for a couple more fields. When I try to enter data, it is going to show me what field that I have missed. Let's add test for my email address. And when I try to submit my email, it is going to tell me that I'm not using the correct email format. That's because for my input type, I have used type as email. This is going to trigger email validation for my input element. There are a couple such elements where you can trigger browser validations. I'm going to link a MDN doc where it is going to show you reference of all these input elements. Let's take a look at this input element called telephone. I'm going to add type as tel and I'm going to enter my test data for my phone number. When I try to submit this data, it is not going to trigger that validation because some types are there for device specific purpose. Type equals tail is used for your for showing numeric keypads on certain devices. In such cases to add your custom validation, you can go for another built in attribute called pattern. Your pattern is going to take 
any regex expression and your input is validated against that regular expression. For my telephone, I'm going to give a basic phone regular expression. Once I add this, if I try to enter test data for my phone number and when I try to submit this, it is going to be validated and it says that I'll have to match the format, but it doesn't tell me what format that I'll have to use. This is one of the issues with your browser validations. They are not intuitive or they don't dynamically tell you if you are using a correct value. The correct value for this phone number would be all numerics followed by a specific sequence what we have mentioned in our regular expression. We cannot expect user to guess this format. So it would be a better idea to show him what fields or what patterns are accepted. For example, if I add admin as my first name, I'll have to show something like I should not be using this value. I'll have to dynamically provide feedback for my user. Let's see how we can do that in our uncontrolled components. First, to get value of my first name, I'll have to define a ref. I'm going to call it first name ref and I'm going to use this hook use ref. And I'm going to extract the use ref from react. For my input element, I'm going to add this ref, first name ref. Now I'll be having access to this first name ref. I can access this on submit handler. But to do this dynamically, we'll have to have this access while user is changing his field. So to access this, we can use an on change handler. Your on change handler will be called for every keystroke. So whenever user is changing his input, we can access the value of ref. Let's try to log the current value of ref and let's see what we get. So whenever I type in test data, I can access that value through my ref. When I type in admin, I can get that value from my ref. This is the place where you can do your custom validations. Now in uncontrolled components, react does not have control on your data or your error validations. In order to handle that, you will have to define your own error states. Let's create a state for managing my errors. I'm going to call it error fields. To set this error fields, I'm going to use set error fields. I'm going to give an empty object for now. Now in my on change handler, I'll check the value for admin. If it matches admin, I'll extract all the current errors. And to my errors object, I'm going to add a new property called first name. And to my first name, I'm going to give a custom message saying you cannot use this. And I'll set back my error fields. Whenever you change, whenever you set a new state, your component will be rendered. So when I type in admin, a new state would be set to your error object and your component renders. So you can do something like this. You can extract the data from your error fields. You can check for first name. If it exists, then you can render your error message. I can get it through error fields of my first name. Let's check it. When I type in admin, I get this error message, you cannot use this. But when I change the text input, this error message does not go away. That's because we'll have to reset our error message. To do that, I'll just have to add an else clause. And in my else, I'll have to check if first name exists, then I'll have to remove that first name. You can either delete that property or you can just assign null to that property. And I'm going to set my error fields back. Whenever I type in admin, I'm going to get statement. Whenever I change my input from admin, it is going to be reset. This way we can dynamically provide feedback to the users on what values he can add on the custom validations that we can set on any of these elements. We are still using uncontrolled components. Your form data is still managed by DOM in order to handle 
the error states which are not supported by your browser we have created a new error state in react and we are managing that explicitly just like your first name you can add validations for rest of your fields now i'm going to scroll down to the section where it says social media links i have a couple of check boxes where it says include portfolio links and include social media links only when i click on these check boxes i should be dynamically rendering these url fields let's see how we can do that in order to access the data from my checkboxes, I'll have to define a ref. For my portfolio checkbox, I'm going to call this portfolio ref and I'm going to get it from use ref and I'm going to assign it use ref. Similarly for social media ref, I'm going to call it social ref. Now to my input checkbox, for my portfolio, I'll add ref as portfolio ref and for my social media checkbox i'm going to add ref as social ref just like last time in order to access this data dynamically we can go for an on change handler in my on change handler i'll have to capture the state of my ref whether my input is checked or not to do that we can create a new state called show fields and we can save the data in this show fields I'm going to add an initial empty object and in my on change handler, I'm going to extract the current fields. Whenever user changes his field for my fields object, I'm going to add portfolio element and I'm going to assign it the checked value of my ref. I'll do the same for another checkbox. To save this data, we'll have to use set show fields and I'm going to assign it fields. Whenever you assign a new state, your component will be rendered. So you can do something like this. You can extract data from show fields. You can check if that field exists. So show fields of my include portfolio. If that exists, only then you can render your input portfolio links field. I'll do the same for my social media links. I'll check if I have include social, only if it exists, I'm going to render that field. So initially it is empty. Whenever I check my checkbox, I'll get that input. Similarly for social. This doesn't quite work because I'll have to change my portfolio ref to social ref. There you go. Now initially it is empty whenever I check social media, that particular URL appears and whenever I check my portfolio, that particular link appears. This way, I can dynamically add fields based on user selection. This might not be the cleanest way to implement dynamic rendering in React, but your uncontrolled components is going to have much better performance than your control components. To check that, let's try to log a render statement. Let's see how many times my component renders. Whenever I change my first name and only when it hits that validation for admin, my component is going to be rendered. When I change it back to reset the state, my component is going to render again. And for all the remaining fields where I don't need an explicit validation, my component does not render. Similarly for checkbox, whenever I change that checkbox, only then my component renders. And for the remaining fields, it does not. That's it for today's video. Let me know if this was helpful for you. In the next video, we are going to build the same form using control components and we'll see what happens to our performance when we do that. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.